Shalom, brothers and sisters. For this week's Thursday Thought, I want to talk to you guys about Jesus and skin color. Um, I am going to talk a little bit about racism, race, the existence and reality that it exists. Basically, last month, the Fellowship put out an image of Jesus that Christine and I worked on together using uh, computer-generated art. We would like to, at some point, raise funds and hire an artist, and I've actually already talked to an artist about this, <clears throat> to put together a series of images of the Savior to represent what he might look like for the fellowship, to have an official fellowship image, if you will. And when Christine and I were working on this, we wanted him to look Jewish. We wanted him to look like someone from the Middle East. Now, I, I'm not looking for accuracy for exactly what Jesus looked like. I, I don't think that's something that we need to concern ourselves with. I will tell you, as, as an apostle of Jesus Christ, I have seen Jesus. He's not a white European man. But I, I, I grew up with these stories about this image of Jesus used in the LDS church. I remember when it first came out, they made a really big deal about it. They pulled us all together and they told these stories about how these different individuals had had these experiences. And when they saw this picture of Jesus, they were like, this is, this is what he actually looked like. And they told this story of how the artist kept going back to the apostles of the Salt Lake City Church and... <clears throat> They were saying, no, that's not right. Change this. No, fix that. And finally he realized, no, I'm painting Jesus because they've seen him. They're, this is what he really looks like. And I remember going to Utah in the late 90s and seeing, I believe it was the actual picture in one of their museums and or some sort of gallery, some sort that was there in Salt Lake City. And I was shocked that that story wasn't there. And when I asked about it, they were like, oh, yeah, that's that's a bunch of folklore. That's that's all myth. It's not true. And I'm, I'm not going to lie. That really hurt my testimony. I had always been told that these men had seen Jesus. And I didn't realize that in the 90s, that's when they were really starting to push away from telling that lie. And, and I'm very thankful that they did. It's very good that they're being honest and they're trying to fix that. But I can tell you, the people that showed me that original picture, they were perpetuating a lie that they had been told. They did not make that up in Columbus, Ohio. That was a lie that they were told by the people that gave them the image. They were actually reading from a piece of paper to us these untruths. And so in the fellowship, I don't want to have that kind of dishonesty and I also, because I've seen Jesus both in vision and in person, I can tell you that how you envision Jesus actually will alter your perspective of what he looks like. And that is to say that five different people can see Jesus Christ and have five different eyewitness testimonies of what he looked like. The first time I saw him in vision, he looked very much like that picture that the Salt Lake City Church uses as their official picture because in my mind, that's what I believed he must look like because I believed the stories that I was told. And so I believe that it being a vision, the Lord presented himself to me in such a way that I would see him as familiar, but it wasn't perfectly like that picture. His skin was darker. And that did throw me off having the vision. I knew it was true because I felt the Holy Spirit, but I had to ponder and pray on that. Why didn't it look exactly the same? And the conclusion I came to was, you know, th there's a lot of racism in the Salt Lake City Church, and so therefore he would need to be presented more as, as a European white man to appease membership, is what I told myself, because I, I didn't know the truth at that time. But when I finally met the Savior in person, he didn't look European at all. He, he looks very Jewish. And I know that there are people that are going to watch this and say, well, I've, I've met Jews, they're white. Like, I've met Jews that are white too. They're European Jews. I've also met African Jews that are black. 
Jews come in a variety of different colors, just like all of the human race. There's a map that shows skin colors and skin tones and how they change. They're darker as you get closer to the equator and lighter as you get the further away from it. So where is Israel? Where is Jerusalem? It's not in Caucasian, European, that skin color zone. It's close to the equator. The people who live there, their skin is more tan, more brown. That's that's a fact of life. So why am I why am I talking about this? Why am I bringing it up? Because when we presented it, one of the first comments that we received asked the question, how do you know this is accurate and what's the point of this anyway? Well, we know Jesus wasn't a white European because he wasn't born in Europe and his ancestry is in the New Testament. He's He's a Jew. He's from the tribe of Judah. He was born in the Middle East, so he's going to look like a Middle Eastern person. I will tell you that this picture is not accurate. It's not exactly what Jesus looks like either. But it's more accurate because it has a more correct skin tone. It has a more correct style of clothing. <clears throat> Jesus would have worn a talit. Jesus would have had the zit seats on his clothes. So my response to this brother was, imagine being anyone that's not a white person of European descent. You see all these images of Jesus, a brown man from the Middle East looking like a white man from Norway or England. That tells a story. A story of white exploitation, exploitation, and a message, a message of white superiority. The Bible says that God's hair is like wool and his feet are like brass or bronze, depending on the translation. Now, that could be a reference to the Temple of Solomon's bronze on the outside, gold on the inside. But the reality is that Jesus would have really looked out of place as a white European in a land of brown Middle Easterners. By trying to create an image of Jesus that, mo that looks more like the people of his time, we can be more inclusive and let others see God as a part of themselves. It ends the idea that white skin is somehow better or that the white race is superior in any way. We as Christians have had to come to this understanding for quite some time now. I think it's time we recognize this in our artwork. Christine also responded and I've gained her permission to share her response. The imagery of Jesus that is familiar to most of us today is largely based on Roman and European depictions that spread far and wide thanks to European colonization. Jesus almost certainly didn't have light skin, hair, or eyes, yet historically this depiction yet historically this depiction of whiteness equal to purity and godliness has been used to enable divisions of oppressions where those with light skin are held in higher regard than those with darker skin. The fact is that no one knows exactly what Jesus looked like when he was on the earth, but we do know that the single misrepresented view of his likeness as a man with European features perpetuates racism and bigotry within Christianity, while including depictions that present a more historically and geographically plausible likeness challenges harmful narratives and hurts no one. So with that in mind, what I want to do is what I always like to do. I want to flip the script. And I want to ask this question. Why does Jesus need to be a white European? Why do we need Jesus to be a white man? Why can't Jesus look like the people where he lived? Why can't Jesus look like someone who existed in his time and place? Sure, maybe Jesus was albino. But I would imagine that if he was, that would be reflected in the scriptures. That would, that would be, have been very noticeable. I don't think that God came here to be out of place physically, but to be out of place because he saw the world as it is in its spiritual creation 
rather than in the typical worldliness of what you can have and what you can take that this world is about. So rather than trying to find reasons to cause more contention, to, to cause more division, let's use this new image and this, this direction that we're moving in as a way to accept more people. Because as a Latter-day Saint movement, we've done an excellent job of rejecting lots of people. There was so much bigotry from Brigham Young's sect and other churches that thought that black skin was an abomination. Even Joseph Smith taught at one point that the Native Americans were going to magically get white skin. I remember talking to missionaries who claimed that this was already happening in places where tribes had been converted and their skin had turned white and just other ridiculous urban legends that came out before the internet so, so people could lie, tell these stories as faith-promoting. But they're not faith-promoting. They're faith-damaging. One of the most heartbreaking stories I have ever heard in my life is a man with dark skin talking to his soon-to-be son-in-law who is a white Caucasian and telling him how thankful he is that his dark-skinned daughter is marrying him because he's obviously a more righteous and holy person because he has white skin. Why did he believe this? Because he was a member of the Salt Lake City Church. And those racist ideas are still alive there today. I once mistakenly made the comment that the LGBTQ community is the new black skin for that church. And that's not true because people with black skin are still persecuted in that church today. I hear people complain about it all the time and I, I saw it growing up. From the time I literally, from the, the month that I left, that my family left that church, I knew racist people who used Brigham Young's teachings and other church leaders from that, that branch of our faith they use their false teachings to support racism. Do we really want to be the kind of people to perpetuate that? Or can we finally break the mold? Can we finally recognize that all people everywhere are God's creation and that God loves everyone equally and that God doesn't care what color our skin is? When it talks about that idea of white or dark skin in the Book of Mormon, it's not talking about our flesh. I believe it's in the first chapter of Alma. I know that in the Community of Christ edition of the Book of Mormon, I'm pretty sure it's the first chapter of Alma, but I know that it's broken up differently in the Salt Lake City Church, and I'm not going to look it up. But it talks about this idea that the Lamanites were pretty much naked except for a, a loin of skin around their waist. Or a skin covering their loins, however you want to say that. Then it says that their skins were dark. That's just another way of saying their garments. We need to learn how to be a people that loves one another and stop finding excuses to bully, ridicule, oppress, and hate each other. When we surround ourselves with people who look like us, who sound like us, who say the same things as us, we don't learn anything new. So my Thursday thought for you today is this. Why does Jesus need to be a white European for us to love, adorn, worship him? Why do we need for him to be a white European for us to hang pictures of him in our home. I would submit to you that he does not. I would submit to you that he can be a brown-skinned man from the Middle East, not merely because it's who he really was, but also because 
It's who we need him to be. That's my thought, and I'll leave it with you. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.